Hello. Good afternoon. <laughs> How is everyone? Hello. Hello. I'm going to just wait like a couple more minutes and then I'll go ahead and get started. I keep on seeing, um, is it Jeff putting all of his stuff on Twitter? <laughs> yep, that I am. <laughs> yes, you're going to win prizes. That's good. You won I yesterday. Hope so. you Apparently, won yesterday. I already won a prize according mm -hmm. to my supervisor. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys could even put it on social media, on Facebook or on Twitter. We were watching both of them. So, yeah. I, I think this morning was good because some of the sessions were pre-recorded and I could sit there and pause them and go do something and then come back. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> that was like sweet. Yeah, was, I actually really enjoy the live sessions though, personally. Yes, I do too. But like, you could get zoomed out. So I sort of like yesterday was like all morning live Zooms and then the afternoon was more pre-recorded and that, do I mean? And then this morning it was flipped. So yeah. I sort of like that. Yeah, I get what you're saying though. Yeah, because you could get Zoom fatigue real quick. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. If someone comes in, I'll just let you know that I'm getting like the doorbell. So this is just how to hyperdoc. Um, just to get an idea, um, do any of you guys know how to hyperdoc or have you guys like seen hyperdocs before? You sort of have an idea of what they look like. Some are saying no, some are saying yes. Okay, so I'll just sort of go ahead and start off slow and then we'll pick up and I'll show you some stuff. I'm gonna put this presentation link in the chat and I'm gonna make sure, because now that everything is changed on all of this. I, I, I get second guess myself. Did I look at it before? Do I know? So I'll put this in here so you have it. It's also in the actual um, uh, presenters page that looks like this. And it is the first one. It says HyperDoc presentation. So you can access it there as well. So basically, um, I got into making HyperDocs more whenever I became a teacher and I wanted students to sort of take the reins and I became more of like a facilitator. And hyperdocs are great for distance learning because you may not be there with the student, but you can still guide them by using the hyperdocs as a way to get them through. Um, so some of the ways that you're gonna see is, um, I think I'm gonna try to move you guys to the top here. There we go. Um, you're gonna see that basically all you need is your Google account. You'll need the internet. Um, I could see if I was still teaching, I would have kids even if they didn't have internet. Um, if I had to give them a packet to pick up, I might even put some QR codes in there that they could use their parents' phone to you know, look at a video or something like that. So I could hyper doc, but like, on print, um, some form of technology. So of course you would need like an iPad or uh, a Chromebook or you know the, the parent's phone or desktop. Um, some Google, Google Apps knowledge, just knowing how to link things and I'll go over that. And then websites to link to the HyperDoc or other files. So it's just like you have to sort of think like what do I want to have? And, what I started to do is I had lessons, you know, over my 24 years of being an English teacher, I had lessons, but like I kept on trying to think of how can I take that lesson and scaffold it for my students so that I'm not teaching it, but that they're clicking on links, watching a video, being able to pause it, <laughs> you know, write down some facts, um, you know, the, you, each learner is different. Um, so. One of the things here is it sort of shows you like a flow chart of like what you need to do. So make sure anytime that you have Google applications um, that you share the doc in a certain way. So it's view only or make a copy of it somehow um, depending upon who your audience is so that um, they can do the links. Some of the times what I do is up here in the right hand corner, 
where the three dots are. If I click on this, I can go to new incognito window. And sometimes I'll put my doc in that new incognito window. And if I have to sign in with a, a Google sign in, I'll use a student username and password just to see what it would look like on their end and make sure all the links work. Um, so that's something that you could do when you do a hyperdoc. Also keep in mind when you're doing YouTube links, you have to make sure it works at the school because some of the times you're going to be making hyperdocs at home and I ran into it where you make a hyperdoc at home, you think it's all good and then the kids can't get to the video. Um, and also, uh, if you use a video, make sure it's approved for WCPS, that you actually check that little box underneath, um, and then students won't have issues with that as well. So for Google Slides, um, I like Google Slides sometimes because you can insert different things like videos and have them watch it at certain times. I like docs for other reasons, and I'll show you some docs and slides that I did. Um, I have somebody that add, added something in the chat. Sometimes if the video says restricted, they may have to sign to Google. That is true. I just thought about that, Anne, and I was going to say that later because I was like, that's a little too much information. But it is true that um, most of the time you'll find a kid has signed into their Google, I mean their YouTube, on the weekend, and then Monday morning it was always inevitable. A kid would be like, I can't get into this, you know, um, video, and I'd be like, you're probably signed into your personal account, get out and sign into your WCPS account. And then they would be able to access it. Um, and then, you know, some, you know, some of these are going to be modeled for you, but these are things to sort of think about that, you know, um, you want to make sure students know how to use these, these materials that you're doing. Um, so um, if you notice, some of these are uh, they have the lessons and they have different tasks and stuff like that. And using a Google Doc template is uh, a really neat thing to do. So I'm going to show you. This is, I always have one here before and after. So for the before, this would have been what I got. Like I found this template. Um, what I like about this template, it goes through the different ways to get the students involved in the lesson. For engage, they tell you insert like something at the beginning of the lesson, like a video, a quote, some hook to get them into, you know, the lesson itself. For the explore one, you're going to give them resources that they're going to explore on their own. And then um, for explain, they're going to use it to explain, you know, you could use it to explain something directly or they can use to explain what they've gotten up above on the other two. Uh, for apply, you could create like an assignment for students to apply what they've learned from everything that they've seen above. And then there is a share element. Usually I use Flipgrid or Wakelet or something like that for people to share. So if you, if you can think of ways to share, that's great too. And then a reflect where they actually go back and think about their learning. And that reflection part is so important for some kids. I usually would do like, you know, they would look at everybody's share and then they would reflect on what they learned and what they thought others learned as well. Um, and I always wanted them to really think about that. And at first the reflect was a little bit, I, I'm not, I'm gonna say less than, you know, uh, impressive, but the more that they got into reflecting, it became um, more rich. So this was the before, that was just like what I had found. So I went ahead and this is when I was an English teacher two years ago. I had them analyze photography. Um, and you could take any of the stuff that I've made and like, you know, make it for your own, make a copy, um, you know, use it the way that you would like, but they had to analyze a photograph. Um, so um, they had to watch a YouTube video um, and, see how you analyze a photograph and then I had them look through the photos um, that they uh, uh, could look at and then I had them choose a picture so they actually like just went through the photos if they opened it up they'd be able to see the photos they could screenshot a photo and then what they would do is then they would go to the slide 
and start placing their notes. And if you see, this says copy of 051. This is actually what I would have put in their Google Classroom as well. So they could, if they wanted to, do it there, but most kids just opened it, made a copy, um, and then started to insert their pictures in there. And this is where they would be building all of like their information. And on each slide, I had them do something different. Um, you know, they had different things they had to do. And um, for this one, they did, um, this was a slide presentation that I had that explained poetry. I um, did it for them live, but I put the slide presentation in there for them. This was prior to Screencastify, or I think I could have even done a Screencastify, this slide presentation, and they could have just watched me present it um, and then watch it whenever they needed to. And then I had two different applies. I made sure that, um, you know, they, they went ahead and they read the photos. They came up with some noun, verbs, and adjectives for the photos. But then I also had them analyze it for other things. And we talked about technique and all that stuff. And then I gave them a rubric for sharing. So all of this was linked in here. And what's nice about this is if you look, this is, a, this is just a Google Doc. The reason they made it blue in the background is they went to, and I'll go slower when I do that, they went to File, Page Setup, and then they went down here and they actually just came up with the background as blue. And then what they did was for each of these, they went ahead and I'll just, um, they inserted a table and they did two things like this. And I'm just gonna say that, and I'm sorry, I'm clicking. I promise I am. I just don't know why it's not coming up. Um, hmm. I'm gonna do it again, insert table. Maybe I didn't do it fast enough. I'm clicking on my mouse. It's acting funny. Hmm. I'll do it down here. Maybe it just didn't like that I didn't have an actual place to insert it. There we go. And as you see up here, what they're doing is they have one um, that is like a full one. So what I would do is I would go like this. You have your four lines, but this one, if you notice, is just a full one. So what you do is you just highlight the two of them and then you go and right click on it. And can you see the merge cells there? Okay, sometimes when you right click on stuff, people can't see it on Zoom. Um, you go to merge cells and it will merge the two together and make it one. And then you have two on the side. So I just always, when I found HyperDocs like this, I just replicated how they looked. Um, I came up with my own pictures, came up with my own colors that I wanted. Um, Beth Downen actually came up with this. Um, and so I gave her credit. She came up with this lesson. This lesson that I did as a hyperdoc was all paper. We had to copy all of the pictures, put them in envelopes, give every kid an envelope, you know, or groups an envelope. They'd have to get their picture. They'd have to fill out. But what happened is this came into a hyperdoc. It actually became very nice. The kids liked it because it was all just collecting their evidence. And they went to each of these things at each of these slides um, and different things that they went to. They just went ahead and took a screenshot and they put it into um, their uh, final slide, which was this slide here. So it became just full of that. Um, another one is this one, I think is a slide. So this is a Google slide. It was about the art of the selfie. So it was like fun to do with the kids. This is one that I found. Um, it talked all about what a selfie is. You had to watch all this stuff about selfies and all this stuff, but it was a really nice way to see how a hyperdoc could be shared this way. Um, it had much of the same way. What I did is I went ahead and showed you the after. So I kept the original thought. I did have, oops, I did have most of uh, what you have here, what I was showing you at the beginning. And then um, I did deviate. Like if you go between the two, you'll see differences. And one thing that I did is I started showing them selfies of my family. So like this is me with my son 
and my daughter and my nephew. And so I showed them different selfies. I showed, uh, you know, my daughter who loves doing selfies. And so I said, what can you infer about her? And so we talked about that. But what was nice is they were able to understand um, what they were doing for the assignment. So they were taking selfies, but they were actually doing them for an actual assignment that we were coming up with for audience tone. Um, and, and it became something that was fun, but also um, something that they could do differently. So uh, what questions do you have? Let me see, I see something's in the chat. Um, yeah, so hyperdocs are Google Docs, which include hyperlinks to videos, slides, just adds more technology to the document. Yeah, it makes it much prettier. And what I notice is the more you can scaffold it for the students, the, the better they like it. Um, they like that, you know, you tell them you're going to do this, then you're going to do this. Sometimes a hyperdoc could last two or three days uh, or a week, depending upon how involved. This one that I did there, it did last a week. But as if you see, um, it was quite involved. And it was quite involved always. It was always a weak one. Um, so um, do they manage a lot themselves then? Yes, they do this a, a lot on their own. Um, sometimes I put the hyperdoc in Google Classroom along with a Google Form. And then if they have any questions, they fill out the Google Form, they ask me questions about it but they know that this is a self-paced on your own. Um, and, you know, I, I am there to facilitate and to answer questions. I am not there to, you know, uh, be up on the stage teaching to them. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's a lot less teacher teaching. Um, I, it was something when I first started doing this, I felt like, um, I felt like I was, I was like not talking as much and I was like, is this really working? But the products that I saw, the kids actually took a lot and did a lot with it. Um, with balanced literacy and with distance learning, this is a great way to implement. Yeah, that's why I was like, I definitely have to do something about HyperDocs um, and it'd be a nice lunch chat for that. Um, also, um, I gave you a couple more um, examples, oops, sorry. A couple more examples. Um, I actually had made a lot of my um, hyperdocs, um, my units into hyperdocs just for me to understand uh, what I was doing. Um, and I don't know if I have these ones linked. This one's linked, but it doesn't look like that one is. But like for this one, I had found something about sonnets and I just went ahead and changed it a little bit. I had day one, day two, day three. And, you know, at the very end, they went to Flipgrid or iMovie and they did their sonnet, they read it and they showed visuals uh, when necessary while doing their sonnet. Um, and I did like a sonnet on hot chocolate to sort of show them that it could be on um, any topic, but they looked at sonnets, um, they, they looked at them and, and uh, analyzed them, and then we went ahead and wrote our own sonnet. Um, so that was something that was nice as well. Um, and again, if you look, um, this is basically like how you, you would use it. As students work independently, teachers act at sorry, acts as a facilitator. As a class, teachers can guide students through the steps, but I really like pulled back on it, uh, which is nice because you can do that a lot um, with the students, uh, especially with distance learning, you're sort of, you know, almost forced to. Um, as groups, students can collaborate and work on hyperdocs together. So I have had where students are on, this, you know, two students are on a hyperdoc together. Um, and they can like see the different sections and then flip classroom or distance learning homework is really um, nice for this. When we first presented this, we've presented this to um, a lot of teachers. Uh, it was myself and another lady in Texas. We decided to get together and present this. So I took this presentation and sort of just took out her stuff because she is a, an educator teaching at a community college in Texas. So she um, does a lot of more distance learning than I did at the time. 
Um, and then these are some ways to collaborate via social media. I will tell you the Teachers Give Teachers website is really nice. Um, they do have a HyperDoc uh, book as well, and I'll have to see why that link's not found. I might have to relink it. Sometimes they change their URLs, um, but they have a HyperDoc um, book that's very nice that I would say, I would suggest uh, reading. I read it and I really liked it. It just suggested some things to do. Um, also, maybe the HyperDocs website, yeah, is is right here. And um, and then they just basically go over a HyperDoc um, and they give you some um, different people that have submitted HyperDocs in there as well. Um, I sometimes just built them from like the, the um, ground up and other times I actually um, found HyperDocs, looked for the type of HyperDoc I was looking for made a copy of it and made it my own. But I always gave the person credit, like any time that I did that. Um, and then I did put some other things in here. I did a HyperDoc podcast with Vicki Davis uh, years ago, maybe two or three years ago. Um, and I put that in there because it really um, has you sort of see a little bit more about what podcasts are. Um, they also have some other things like um, HyperDoc library here. Uh, where they have, you know, different grades and, and different things that you can look up and see all the different hyperdocs that people have made. Um, it's a little crazy, but it is very resourceful to see. Um, what other questions do you guys have? Let me see. I see something in the chat. Can you show us how to insert a hyperdoc into a slide? Oh, okay. Yeah, I could show you that. No, no, no. I completely understand because like I I get the same way. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I think I know how to do that. Then I like try to do it. I'm like, I don't know how to do it. That whole merging thing, uh, you know, uh, is hard for me sometimes. So I'm just going to go to a new presentation. And then if I'm doing a hyperdoc, um, I, you know, I would have my, my main slide, but I would go ahead and put new slide. Um, and then I'm trying to make sure that I, I do this correctly. Are you just saying like how to hyperlink? So I think, let me look in the. Yes. Okay, so just how to hyperlink, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm in my presentation. So if I wanna put something like, go to this basic hyperdoc, and review how it looks. And then what you can do is go over here, you have the URL, you go ahead and you copy it, you go back, sorry, I'm going to the wrong one all the time, and then you go ahead and highlight the words that you want to be hyperlinked. And there's two ways. You can go to this little insert link, when you click on it, this comes up, and you hit apply. And I'm gonna copy this because I'm gonna show you a different way to do it. So sometimes I have to, every year I used to do this, I would check to make sure my links were correct because sometimes they get broken um, or somebody makes them different. You can remove the link by clicking on it. You can also copy the link, but I'm gonna remove the link. And another way you could do it is you highlight it and you go ahead and right click and you click on link. How did you get it though when you had like in your slideshow that you sent to us, yeah. I can click on the image and the Oh image. yeah, oh, okay, same concept. So what you're gonna do is let's just go out and I'm gonna say hyper doc. I'm gonna say images. And then I usually do this. I usually look for usage rights to so say labeled for reuse is just like good practice, but then it gets really low. So let's say, all right, most of the time people don't mind if we use it because we're teachers <laughs> and we're not going to use it for evil or anything like that. I'm going to move this up and then I'm going to right click on it. Now there's two ways you could do it. You can save the image as and then put it on your desktop but sometimes I just right click on it and copy it, especially if my background's gonna be white, I don't worry about it. And then I go back to my presentation 
and then I paste it. I rearrange it, I put it here, and now if I go ahead and I click on this, do you see how the link comes up? And I'll just paste it, apply, whoops, sorry. I think I have to paste, I have to go back to one of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this because I just copied and pasted that. And I'm gonna go here, paste, apply. And now when I go to it, you'll see it's, it, so you could do any image can be where you click on it and you can go to it. Also what's nice is let's say I wanna do um, a HyperDoc video. And I'm gonna find this video. I'm gonna pause it before it comes up and I am going to move this out of the way. It always gets in my way. I'm gonna hit copy. And then on my presentation, and I'm gonna just go ahead and go new slide. And I could do my layout where it's blank. I can insert a video, put that URL that I just copied in there it will come up, I'll select it, and I have to let somebody in, I'm admitting somebody, and hello, and what you do is once this video is in, if you see all this stuff comes up over here, if I only want the students to watch half of this video, I can put it that they can only watch it till two, like they can always go out and watch the whole video, uh, but like 207, let's say. I can autoplay when it's presenting. I can also mute the audio. I've done that before. I only want them to watch the video with no sound. And I'll say in the directions, watch this video, it will not have any sound. And write down what you observe. Um, and, and so you would be able to have that in there. And when you hit present, you're gonna see it starts right away. Um, so it, it, it's really nice, but it will only go to two minutes and seven seconds. Um, and then you'll have that. So did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Something I saw too, I just watched the 45 minute genius um, screencastify that yeah. I never thought of after all this time with distance learning. I kept recording myself and adding it as a classroom assignment, but I never thought to embed it on yep. my slides as well. So I can have myself explaining the slide on the slide, which I think is more effective than adding it to classroom and having kids never click on it, so. Yes, and um, actually BISFA did that for their, um, their, their senior like awards or whatever, each senior or each kid gets like a, each teacher gives two awards out. One is That's like so for the best student and one's for the most improved. And they actually use Screencastify and had them talking to each student, Aww, so the parent, so yeah, so the parent could sort of see what the teacher said about them, not just like in written words, but like you know their emotion about how well the student had already done in class or how they were so well improved. So that was really nice too. But yes, and you could have you could shrink it. I've done it where I have music coming on and playing, and I have it like this tiny down in the corner, and nobody can see it. <laughs> And it looks just like a line and I have it so it automatically plays when they present it and it has music playing and they just don't know where it's coming from. Do you know what I mean? So you can do stuff like that as well. Um, you know, that's you, under, is that the autoplay when presenting? Is that yep, what that where it yep, comes right up here? What it says autoplay when presenting. And okay. as soon as I feel long, like that's important for our videos as well so that it automatically comes on so that they don't just necessarily have to click it. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. Like, is, that, is that a possibility for our own videos? Do you know? Well, the only thing is, is they have to have it in present mode. So, you know, your first slide, just say, make sure you have this in present mode to get the exactly. you know, full effect. I also know some teachers put in sound, you know, how you could put the little sound clips in, but you have to make sure each of those sound clips are given um, um, the anyone can lit view rights. For some reason, I noticed that over yeah. the first time doing it, I had that problem. I, did, I had to go through and chick, click it for everything. Yeah, Katie yeah. Ling fingered it out because we were like, what's going on? Why can't they do this? You know, uh, but then we realized that. But yeah, again, you know, audio versus video, maybe having both because you have different types of learners, but it's really nice when you have the video of the teacher talking and explaining something, you know, pointing to it, whatever, you know, it just, it makes it more you know, where there's, they feel like you're still there with them. 
Um, so I would agree with that. Um, yeah, but you can you can about insert anything into a hyperdoc. But what I did is like I just looked for ones and said I wonder how they made that, and then I would sit down and try to make it. You know, um, and it just worked out really well. Like for example, if you go into a document that's where you come in with some problems where you might not be able to insert a video. But this is what I do. So I have my video, sorry, I clicked on it and it started playing. I have my video, so I'll go ahead and I'll take a screenshot of the video. And then I'll go to my document and then I'll insert an image, upload it from my computer, I'll go to my desktop, there's my image, and this, you know, whatever you want, the video, you could have the front page of the video or whatever to be there. I'll make it whatever size I want. And then what I'll do is where, whatever I want to link it to. So I'm going to just use this URL again because I can, I know that's one I can use. I'll just go ahead and link the image on there, but then the video will play as soon as they click on it. So for that one, it won't play, it will play the whole video and then they'll see everything after. Um, if you don't want them to go on to the next video, you know, <laughs> um, then you would want them to just stay within the Google Slides. So those are your limitations. You have to sort of think of uh, what you wanna use for each one. Um, I like Google Docs sometimes because I can make it like, you know, vertical and moving down the page, but other times I like the Google Slides for you know having the students be able to add slides to you know insert information in it just makes it easier for them because on a google doc i don't know if you guys have noticed on the ipads um, on the google doc when a student enters in um, an image it is really hard like I, on here i can resize it but on an ipad it's very difficult to resize an image so the images come up as the whole page sometimes um, and unless they've changed that it, it's it, it would be crazy um, somebody asked if you don't select autoplay when presenting then can they just click on the video for it to start I had a lot of problems with this during distance learning um, I would say that it's better if they hit present because it then they can click on it um, I would just put the directions on the first slide and maybe on every slide where you have a video right underneath. Be sure to click up in the right hand corner, present, you know, and even have a picture of it with an arrow, you know, pointing up to the right hand corner until they're used to it. Um, and then they, sh somebody said they should be able to, okay. Uh, yeah, just make sure that you, you um, keep it so that we said with videos, YouTube videos, make sure you try it at the school, not at home, because <laughs> some of them, and make sure like on a YouTube video, like on this one, I need to approve it. I need to click approve or my students wouldn't be able to view it. And somebody, uh, uh, Ann also said, make sure that um, they're signed into their WCPS account on YouTube so that they can see YouTube. Um, that's another thing that sometimes becomes a contention um, with just, just you know, uh, when you're building something like this. But it is very nice. Um, you get a lot of, of uh, uh, great things from the students. I would say um, I tried to always give them choice. Um, so, for example, on that share option, I might tell them um, you could do a Flipgrid or you can do an iMovie. Um, you can, you know, do a screencastify, you could tell them, or go to Flipgrid, so you can give them several options on what they can do. Um, that makes you go to two places, or, or they can insert their links in, in um, the final presentation. But what's nice is you get to see variety, and I always felt like with this type of um, uh, lesson, where it was more the students going through their journey, and then um, showing me what they learned, it wasn't the same stuff I was getting from each student. I was getting individualized thinking. I wasn't reading the same thing over and over again. I had 135 students the last year I taught. So like I was, I was getting um, originality and I wasn't getting, you know, um, canned stuff. Um, so, oh, I hit stop share screen, sorry. <laughs> I was trying to go to my chat. Um, so let me see what else here. 
Uh, can you do a Flipgrid PD, please? Oh, yes, we have some in the summer, Sarah. If you want to email me, uh, we might have a couple uh, openings because um, some some people must have like decided to go on vacation or something and they took removed themselves, but I can put you in. We have a couple of Flipgrid um, PDs over the summer as well, Screencastify. So if you just want to email me, I'll put my email in here so that you can um, just not try to find me because I think it's on the one thing, but that would help you. Yeah, just email me. Anybody can on this session. Um, any other questions? Let's see. Okay. Yep. Go make some uh, <laughs> make some lunch. I, I understand. I made lunch for my daughter before, and my son is actually at my sister's visiting for the week. So. Um, they would probably be trying to kill one another as well at this time. It was time. a little less on the ball doing other school stuff before this. So there, yeah, I, I, I know. I in there and I'm like, oh my God, okay. Oh, I, I was making lunch at a quarter till 12 going, what, <laughs> what, what was I thinking? Like, I just got like completely like off on some sort of tangent, but thank oh, yeah. you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank You're you. welcome. You have a wonderful day. Thank Anybody else you. have any other questions? And again, you know, the best thing to do is just look at one sort of like this one and then think of, you know, how can I take an existing lesson and put it in? Uh, because that's basically what I did when I did that one, that photo analysis one that I showed you. I just changed the background, but I kept it basically the same stuff. But I told myself, you know, I have this lesson. It's huge. It's weeks worth of stuff that you know, Beth Downen had given us and it's awesome, but now I need to digitize it because I literally, cause these photos are all, you know, color black and white. I would use my own printer at home and print out these, these pictures and laminate them. And of course students would destroy one or drop one and go under something. So I was always trying to replenish those folder, you know, those little envelopes every year. So this was nice to have it so that I didn't have to do any of that. It was all put in here and it was all, you know, digital that they could look at it and access it at their leisure. And if they wanted to change their picture, you know, at nine o'clock at night, they could. And they would just go ahead and redo the one thing they did in class and they didn't have to wait till the next day to get the envelope to choose a new picture. So it just gave them some options at home um, to do some of the work. All right, so any questions? I don't wanna end early unless you guys don't have any questions. And if you make any and you need help, just, you know, reach out to me. I enjoy trying to figure it out. I had a teacher reach out to me. She saw something on the internet and it was basically um, Google Slides and it had a whole bunch of Spider-Man on it. And you clicked on the Spider-Man and it, the, the Spider-Man had numbers on them. You clicked on the Spider-Man and you went to the number page and you had to answer something. And she was like, I want to create this. How can I do it? <laughs> and so like we just sat down and broke it down and we figured out how to make it. Um, so I can always, if you find something and you're like, I found this really cool hyperdoc, but I don't know how they made it. I can figure it out. We'll find a way. All right. So if you guys are done, if you don't have any questions, I'm going to let you guys leave a little early, get some time to relax, go out and see how pretty it is outside. And I see something in the chat. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. You're welcome. Thank you. And um, have a wonderful rest of the day. I can't wait. I'm, I'm going to go to a couple sessions and I'm excited about um, seeing them. So, and make sure that you guys um, go on social media and put your hashtag WCPS Maryland, it's MD Learns. I'll put it in the chat. If you do that, you can get prizes. We're giving prizes away each um, day. So let me put that in, WCPS MD Learns. And if you put that in um, on Twitter, uh, Instagram, or Facebook, we'll, we'll be able to catch it and see it. And if you want to do the at WCPS um, Maryland, you can do that one as well. Okay, so thank you guys. You have a good day.